Hello and welcome to the seminar. My name is Chinmay Patel. I am Principal Applications Engineer with Microchips High Performance Microcontroller Division. Focus of my engineering career of more than 15 years has been on development of real-time system software. This is the first in the series of short seminars that will introduce you to concepts of real-time systems. In this seminar, we shall discuss the fundamental concept of task and relevant topics. Expected length of this seminar is 15 minutes. Let's get started. So what is a system? A system is something that solves a problem. For example, to solve the problem of dirty dishes, we can design a system of dishwasher. As we know, when we start a dishwasher, many things happen. For example, water intake, motor operation that swirls water to clean dishes, water drain, etc. Dishwashers also provide a variety of wash cycles to handle different types of utensils and amount of cleaning they need. Also, if you open the door of a dishwasher in the middle of its operation, most probably it will sense that the door is opened and it will stop its operation. And the latest high-end dishwashers may even have an LCD display that shows various status and control information on the front panel. An intelligent unit such as microcontroller can manage various functions in a system in some coherent way. For example, a microchip PIC microcontroller embedded in a dishwasher can manage various functions to fulfill coherent operation of the dishwasher. So what is a task? A task is a group of instructions that execute on a microcontroller to solve a portion of the problem. This group of instructions performs a function of a system. For example, in a dishwasher system, the following tasks may exist. 1. Water manager. This task manages the water intake and drain. 2. Motor manager. This task manages the direction and speed of a motor according to the selected wash cycle. 3. Door Manager. This task tracks status of dishwasher door and informs other tasks of the current status or any change in the status. 4. Display Manager. This task tracks status of various functions of the dishwasher and displays it on the LCD mounted on the front panel. Let's talk about multitasking. While zigzagging on a highway with a cup of coffee in one hand and a mobile phone in the other, we are multitasking. In this case, the central non-intelligent unit in our system, the brain, is managing multiple tasks of driving, drinking, talking, and potentially safely switching the lanes all at once. Likewise, in the dishwasher system, the microcontroller may be concurrently managing a variety of tasks such as water manager, motor manager, door manager, display manager, etc. Each task individually thinks that it has the full attention of the microcontroller. However, in reality, the microcontroller is attending each one of them according to the predetermined scheme called scheduler. We will talk about the scheduler later in this seminar. Now let's talk about the most essential aspect of a real-time system, the deadline. In our dishwasher system, say the water manager task is currently filling the water in the chamber. When the dishwasher is full with water, the water manager task should immediately shut the water intake. Otherwise, the water may spill out of the dishwasher. Every task in a real-time system is characterized by its deadline. A task is expected to perform its function by the time allocated to it, meaning before the deadline. The time allocation or the deadline may be absolute or relaxed. For example, if a task must perform its function within one second, then the deadline is an absolute deadline. On the other hand, 
if the task should perform its function in about one second or so, then the deadline is relaxed. When the deadlines are absolute, the real-time system is called a hard real-time system. The tasks in a hard real-time system are governed by rigid time constraints. When the deadlines are relaxed, a real-time system is called a soft real-time system. The tasks in a soft real-time system do not have rigid time constraints. The deadline for the water manager task in the scenario mentioned above should be absolute. Otherwise, the probability of spilling the water would be quite high, resulting in many unhappy dishwasher owners with frequent wet floors. On the other hand, a display manager task may have relaxed deadline. Obviously, if a real-time system task fails to meet its deadline, it may have dire consequences. Since there is only one microcontroller performing many different tasks of varied importance, it is imperative to determine task deadlines and their relative importance in the system. This leads us to the concept of priority. Priority determines the importance of a task in the system. In a real-time system, every task has an assigned priority. The higher the priority, the better the chance of the task executing on the microcontroller and meeting its deadline. So, in our dishwasher system, we may assign higher priority to the water manager than the display manager. This ensures that when the water needs to be shut off, the ongoing display update will not unduly delay the water manager from performing its job in time. No water spills, no wet floors, happy owners. But how does the priority actually help coherent functioning of the system? Using priorities of each task in a system, we can devise a scheme that allows coherent operation of the system. Simply by preventing the low priority tasks from doing their work when a higher priority task wants to do work, we can maintain coherency of operation. In other words, by virtue of its priority, a task can preempt lower priority tasks. This prerogative of higher priority tasks to perform its job even when other lower priority tasks are performing their job is known as preemption. Let's see an example to explain the concept. As shown in this slide, consider two tasks in the dishwasher system, the higher priority water manager and the lower priority display manager. There are two figures shown on this slide. The upper figure shows visual of the two tasks in form of their function, while the lower figure shows time continuum of tasks executing on the microcontroller embedded in the dishwasher. At time t1, water tap is on and the dishwasher chamber is being filled with water. Exactly at this time, the display manager is updating the display and has printed GOO goo on the display, which is part of the complete message good status that it wants to show on the display. Next, at time t2, the dishwasher chamber is full so that there is a need to shut off the water tap. At time t3, immediately after time t2, the display manager is paused, that is preempted, and the water manager swings into action and shuts off the water tap. Notice that the display at time t3 is still showing GOO. Only after the water is shut off at time t4 that the display manager is able to complete its work and the display is showing good status. Notice on lower figure that the display manager is preempted by the water manager between time t2 and time t4. But which authority in the system decides which task runs at what time? Well, that's the job of the scheduler. A scheduler in the system lines up tasks in accordance with their priority. It works as an arbitrator. At any given time, it decides which task must 
perform its job and which task should be paused. Thus, when water needs to be shut off in a dishwasher, the scheduler decides that the lower priority task, the display manager, must give way to the higher priority task, the water manager. Only after the water manager finishes its job that the scheduler allows the display manager to continue its work. Thus, in effect, the scheduler in real-time system maintains a ranked list according to the priorities of all the tasks in the system. And by means of preemption, the scheduler enforces the ranked list by allowing or disallowing any particular task to perform its job at any given time. Hence, the typical scheme employed for scheduler in real-time system is called priority-based preemptive scheduling. Quite mouthful, huh? That brings us to the end of this seminar. Let's summarize the concepts we have just covered. A basic unit of operation in a system is a task. A system may have multiple tasks running at any given time. Tasks in real-time systems have deadlines. If tasks fail to meet deadlines, dire consequences may follow. According to their importance, tasks get assigned priorities. The higher the priority, the higher the importance. Higher priority tasks can do their job while pausing the lower priority tasks. This is called preemption. Scheduling scheme enforces priority-based preemption to maintain coherency of the system. Lastly, if this seminar has incited enough interest, please do read more on the topic at the references shown on this slide. The easiest to find and have fun with is the Wikipedia at www.wikipedia.com. On this website, search for the word R-T-O-S, ERTOS, and cruise on from there on. Another very helpful resource on real-time system and operating system concepts is a book written by Jean Labras, who is also the author of MicroCOS. This real-time operating system is ported on all microchip microcontrollers. His book has abundant reading material for novice as well as experienced programmer. And finally, my all-time favorite book on introductory concepts of operating systems is written by Andrew Tannenbaum. It covers aspects of general purpose as well as real-time operating system software. With that, I shall say goodbye and please don't forget to provide your feedback on this seminar. Thanks for your time today.